slides will come up. I will give you some update on our intravenously injectable uh, uh, messenger RNA uh, uh, nanoparticle formulation, which is uh, uh, currently in clinical trials for uh, uh, cancer immunotherapy. Um, first of all, to give you an introduction into our company, we are uh, a company with many different focuses, but everything uh, is somehow aligned around immunotherapy, uh, messenger RNA-based therapies, and uh, uh, innovative cancer therapies uh, all in the field of immunotherapy. So, so some immuno is always uh, involved. So we have different uh, types of uh, platforms. We have strong uh, investors uh, from, from private investors. We are about 10 years old now, a little bit more than 10 years, uh, having now more than 700 employees and by now get a, a, a decent number of corporations with a, a number of a big pharma partners. Um, our company is uh, kind, of, kind of different to many other biotechs as we are uh, uh, based on, on different lines of development. One of those is the messenger RNA technology platform where we use messenger RNA as an active pharmaceutical ingredient, but there's also a branch uh, focusing on cell and gene therapy. There is a, a, a protein uh, therapeutics branch. There is a small molecules branch, which somehow then uh, ideally uh, uh, interact uh, synergistically with this, uh, each other. And then we have overall uh, uh, units like formulation where we are in bioinformatics clinics and so on. And we do also have a own manufacturing site close to our headquarter in Mainz, Germany. So coming to the, uh, to the messenger RNA platform, we use messenger RNA as a pharmaceutical uh, ingredient for uh, different types of uh, applications. The first one, this is the one I, would, uh, I will report about today, is the, 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 the cancer immunotherapy where different clinical projects are ongoing. We are also interested in, in, in treating infectious diseases using RNA, and we are also uh, uh, developing RNA uh, um, nanomedicines for other indications like protein replacement therapies and, uh, and others. So uh, uh, cancer immunotherapy, uh, this has been now a, a topic in, in, in many different uh, um, presentations. So the, the, base, uh, the basis is that uh, tumor cells uh, can be uh, recognized by the immune system through their tumor-associated antigens, just like uh, ordinary pathogens from, from infections. And uh, the aim is to, to direct the immune system and to, to increase the immune response against uh, uh, these, these um, tumor cells, which can be then recognized by the, um, by, by the tumor-associated uh, antigens. Uh, in contrary to, to classical approaches where people uh, uh, use a peptide for vaccination, we use uh, messenger RNA, which uh, codes for the, the peptides. So the messenger RNA is, is delivered into uh, uh, cells in the, in, uh, in the patient's body, and these cells will then synthesize the, uh, uh, the peptide. In our case, we deliver the, the messenger RNA to antigen-presenting cells, and these antigen-presenting cells will uh, um, um, synthesize the peptides present them uh, at their surface and thus stimulate a, a cascade of different immune responses comprising activation of T cells against this specific antigens uh, with the tumor antigens, but uh, also uh, we induce a generic cascade of uh, immune reactions uh, comprising uh, elevated levels of cytokines um, and so on. So the task is there, of course, to bring this uh, uh, messenger RNA into the, the target cell. Um, and before I come to that, um, of course, the, the messenger RNA must be suitable for a, a, a pharmaceutical uh, application. For that, we have optimized um, the, the RNA in, in, in all kinds of molecular aspects in order to improve the signal we gain uh, from, that, uh, uh, from that compound. So there's the op. Um, uh, this one. That's the open reading frame, which gives the, the information on the peptide, and there's the five, five prime and three prime UTR, which all have been modified and optimized uh, in order to get um, Im improved um, signal. And this RNA is then um, 
administered to patients by different administration routes for cancer immunotherapy. We currently apply two different routes of administration. One is a direct injection of the RNA into the lymph nodes. In that case, the RNA is uh, uh, present in a, in a buffer system or we inject the RNA uh, in, as in form of nanoparticles intravenously and then these nanoparticles target uh, uh, antigen presenting cells. Um, here you see some cartoons uh, on, on, on the uh, organization of these particles. We, we form them by, by a self-assembly from cationic liposomes and RNA, and we arrive at uh, um, uh, uh, particles with a molecular organization which has some, some, some uh, lamella-like uh, uh, um, order where we think that the RNA is uh, uh, sandwiched in between repeating lipid bilayers and thus protected from the, uh, fr from the de degradation in serum, where uh, the, the, the particle interface uh, is, is covered by an RNA layer, which is required for, for targeting um, selectivity. How we came up with this model, I explained a little bit more to detail in, in our presentation from, from Monday. And here you see an electron micrograph, and you can clearly see this lamellar organization which is kind of compacted to, to a global structure which is uh, uh, um, uh, favorable for protecting the RNA from, uh, from degradation in serum. On this basis, we have developed different types of clinical products. So this uh, uh, is our, uh, one of our types of clinical products. That is what we call an IMP kit, where uh, uh, RNA um, uh, in, in buffer solution is provided to, to the, 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 uh, the pharmacy of the hospital together with, with, uh, with the diluent and liposomes. And the RNA is reconstituted or prepared prior to injection by adding uh, diluent and liposomes to the, to the RNA. And by that, in this uh, mentioned self-assembly process, I come up with this slightly opaque product. In that case, you see uh, uh, four different um, RNAs, which are then for, uh, 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 transferred into four different RNA lipoplex nanoparticles. Uh, what we also do is we manufacture the ready-to-use product by, by a, by a microfluidic-like uh, process where uh, RNA uh, and uh, vehicles are incubated with each other in, in, in a proprietary fluid path system. We come up with, with a um, bulk product which then can be filled and uh, stored in the liquid, frozen or, or stabilized de dehydrated phase depending on the necessities of the, uh, the respective clinical uh, project. Why do we do this um, different ways of stabilization? This is seen here. We have different types of um, clinical uh, wasn't this in between? Ah, yeah, it, that's, it skipped that one. We have different types of clinical studies, which we uh, uh, call uh, either FixVac or uh, RNA warehouse or mut uh, IVAC mutanome uh, vaccination. And it, uh, it um, indicates an, an increasing individualization of, of the medications. Fixed work means that we, the, the patients receive de fixed defined known uh, antigens um, uh, which are uh, known for a certain indication. In the warehouse approach, we screen the patients for uh, the, uh, the antigens they are positive for, and then we select from a pre-existing warehouse only these RNA coding and, uh, RNAs uh, that code for the antigens that the patient is positive for. And in the ultimate case, we have a strictly personalized pathway where patients' tumors are sequenced by certain algorithms. Uh, antigenic mutations are identified. And on this basis, the uh, um, DNA template for RNA synthesis is uh, manufactured and the patient receives the uh, uh, medication strictly according to his personal um, uh, tumor. And as these are quite different in, in, in the scale required and the settings, we, we apply different modes of, of manufacturing for, for, for the different settings. Here you see an uh, overview of our, our uh, current clinical pr uh, pipeline. Um, so uh, there are uh, um, studies in different indications, predominantly, uh, so initially we started for, with the uh, nanoparticle formulations with uh, melanoma, um, where we have um, uh, in, intravenously and intranodally injected um, medications. 
uh, the, the one with the stars are those which are uh, injected intravenously uh, as, as nanoparticles. And um, subsequently, I can give you now some, some further information on, on this uh, first melanoma study where we uh, brought these particles into patients for the first time. So this is what we call uh, lipomarid. It's already ongoing for, uh, uh, for some, some time. Uh, we have um, a certain uh, um, administration uh, mode, which I can show uh, as well to more detail uh, uh, on the subsequent slides, if starting with a weekly, then a bi-weekly um, uh, indication. Somewhere there should be also the, the dosings. Um, 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 we administer f uh, RNA nanoparticles of coding for two, four different uh, tumor antigens, which are uh, uh, indicated here. And uh, uh, so the endpoints are, um, uh, are as given here in the, um, uh, in, in the slide as usual for, for phase one studies. Maybe briefly, this is a bit more clear uh, uh, regarding the, the um, administration schedule. Uh, so the, this is the, 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 the weekly dosings the patients receive. And here you see the, the, the dose escalations. You see we started with a relatively low total dosing, as low as uh, initially 7.2 micrograms, and uh, this means only a fourth of that, so uh, 1.8 micrograms per uh, RNA per patient, and we escalated this uh, to uh, up to 400 uh, micrograms per patient, which was still uh, um, tolerated, and this is um, basically still ongoing. Here you see some, some uh, um, re results from, from uh, um, um, investigating the immune response. Um, um, summarizing, we see both um, uh, generic and antigen-specific uh, uh, Im immune responses. Um, for the, for the um, uh, antigens we, we have uh, ad administered. And to sum this up, uh, as I should be in time as the, uh, the chair, um, yeah, we, we could um, demonstrate so far that uh, our RNA nanoparticles are, can be safely uh, administered and they are well tolerated uh, now within a population of more than 60 patients. The adverse uh, uh, um, reactions were mostly mild to moderate and uh, basically related to the usual uh, uh, um, reactions on, on vaccinations, so fever, chills and so on, which can be managed easily in the clinics. Uh, we see a relatively high variation between the different patients, which may be due to the, to the uh, 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 personal uh, 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 immune situation of the, uh, uh, of the patients. And we have found actually uh, antigen-specific T-cell responses in a relatively high fr fraction of the, uh, all the, the, um, uh, the patients which have been analyzed. We have a strong de novo uh, uh, um, uh, induction of uh, target antigen specific responses as well as a expansion of uh, already pre existing uh, uh, immunity after vaccination. And this is uh, ongoing. This is a short summary which maybe uh, I skip. And with that, I would like to thank you. And I'm open for questions and would like to um, uh, show you here the, the people who have cooperated with the study. Thank you very much. So how do you account for possible immune editing after you've decided, even after you've screened, right, and you define a dominant antigen? Um, what if the immune system uh, ultimately uh, works around that uh, antigen? Is there a follow-up strategy then? Um, so uh, what do you mean that the, the, the immune system works around the... Uh, so so, so you, you, you choose the uh, immune response by giving an uh, RNA expression for a particular, I presume, peptide. Right. So. And, and so that's a, that's, that's a chosen one for that patient. But as the immune response evolves, you may make an effective immune response, and then resistance sets in. Yeah. The tumor chooses 
a uh, ultimately makes a, a, a mutates escapes from sure. that immune yeah. attack. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, this is an, uh, of course a, a very important question, and we 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 look at that in that case, which I. Uh, showed these were uh, shared tumor antigens which are expressed in, in, in uh, the tumors of many patients with this indication. But your point is particularly important if we do the approach with a personalized uh, vaccination where we identify this, this personalized antigens and of course in fact the tumor may mutate and, and kind of escape uh, uh, from, from being recognized by, uh, by, by the vaccine. Uh, so far, we cannot answer yet if this uh, uh, occurs and to which um, extent. But uh, this is something we are aware of and which we will look at very carefully within the ongoing and continuing clinical studies. Uh, yeah, maybe you with you. Um, I have a question about your three um, modes of use of, of, of the uh, um, your various systems, and you go to increasingly personalized system, as I understand it. Um, what determines who gets which level? Um, uh, this is, is this something which is no, this on... Is just, uh, this is just uh, uh, um, subsequent clinical trials. So we have, we have these clinical trials where we have fixed combinations in indications where this makes sense as uh, uh, the, right. the antigens okay. are yeah. there. Yeah. And so the, 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 the ultimate goal, more or less, I don't know if I, if I can say this, is I'm more or less a chemist by education, not, not a medical doctor, but I think the ultimate goal is to come up with a, with a personalized vaccine because with a, with a personalized vaccine, you have a higher chance of creating immunogenicity. Sure. And therefore, the, the, the final aim would be to, to have a pipeline to manufacture personalized cancer vaccine for each patient in a, a suitably short time with an affordable price. Since you add RNA on the surface of these particles, I wonder, do you obtain very different power distribution when using different RNAs? Yes, and not with different RNAs, but the RNA on the surface is the, is the driving force for our targeting selectivity. So we are kind of uh, uh, having contraintuitive uh, uh, gene delivery systems as they are negatively charged, or at least not positively charged, and this makes them accumulate in the spleen and not, uh, not being, being uptaken in other organs. So that's very important because we don't want to have off-target effects. And maybe Danny is the last one. Uh, can you comment what are the optimal conditions to store your lipoplexes and uh, how long they are stable? Um, yes, so we, we have different um, lines of, of development as, as uh, we showed. So now we are able to freeze the, the, the ready-to-use lipoplexes and we have data for more than nine months, I think, and we are quite confident that this can be well extended as we do not see any change of any quality indicative parameter. So freezing should be on the, on the safe side. With the other uh, um, uh, uh, conditions, uh, liquid storage, we are at several months, uh, maybe not enough to reach at uh, two years as you would like to have. And for lifelization, we haven't generated yet the data because we have not arrived yet at these last batches which would make this necessary. So then, um, 